Welcome to the show. Normally we'd have a very small, cute little Australian boy who we hired. He sits in the corner all day and eats witchetty grubs. And his name is Jackson, but he's not here for this episode due to mysterious circumstances. You got COVID again. Yeah, I okay. The mystery has been solved. A lot it's of mystery is coughing. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, we wish you well, Jackson. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We're going to three-man this. We can do it. It's okay. We have a yeah. bunch of topics. Um, how strongly do you guys feel about the Pokemon ripoff that everybody's puking and crying over? I think the game is so good. I've been playing a ton really? of it. I've really enjoyed it. I, che I checked in yeah. on your stream a little bit. Yeah, you seem like you were flying through the game, making a ton of progress. I'm also not playing solo, so like Scooch uh, has been handling a lot of like the resource management stuff since I'm just uh, not a survival gamer, and I've been doing a lot of like farming and fighting. That makes a lot more sense because I I checked in and I was like, damn, you got a lot of stuff for how far you or far you seem to be. <laughs> okay, the puzzles fit together. Got it. Yeah, cool. We've been playing on a private server. Oh, nice. I've heard the multiplayer is kind of a pain in the ass. Is that true? I don't know. Since we did a dedicated server, we haven't had to deal with the like multiplayer hiccups, mm -hmm. so I couldn't tell you. I imagine with the player count, it probably is disastrous, though. Mm -hmm. Okay, who wants to explain the drama to listeners who may not know what we're even talking it. about? Sure. Since I'm Go since ahead. I'm kind of passionate about the game, so the drama is that it's a pretty clear derivative uh, bootleg Pokemon. It's very clearly borrowing a lot of the Pokemon formula, but mixing it up in a survival game, which I actually think is a pretty smart idea because it gives it a lot more depth than it would normally have. Even though I don't really like survival games, I get it. And it's really streamlined and easy. So like you can catch your Pokemon. They're called pals in the game. And instead of using them for battle or whatever, you can actually use them as laborers for your, your facility. So you can have them mining for you, breeding for you, gathering materials, all kinds of shit, getting food. And they have different like perks and stats that change who's good at what. And it's it's pretty it's pretty intricate and fun. Pokemon with guns is what I heard. Yep. That's the big thing. That was the big marketing. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's also what I call it too. It's Pokemon with guns, but the survival elements are, like, the biggest thing that's separated. It's not just Pokemon and guns. They added all of that shit with base building and whatever. So, the controversy is, it's clearly borrowing a lot from Pokemon, even in terms of some of its designs. Like, a lot of the pals look very, very, very similar mm -hmm. to their Pokemon Hells. counterparts. Yep. Even outside of, like, the basic ones, like, a lamb, right? Like, there's only so much you can do with that. Like, even outside of that, they have ones that look directly ripped off from pokemon but with like a little change to them nothing too crazy and people got pretty upset about that calling it like lazy and then a theory started to circulate that it was actually ai generated because i think it was the ceo or whatever the company expressed that he was interested in ai generated images or something at some point i can't quite recall exactly what that was they have a game where the entire premise is based around ai generated images is that what it was? So yeah, they have a game where it's basically a Jackbox game, or uh, what's the Gardic phone where you draw things, but mm, you yeah, have to yeah. compare it against AI pictures. So, gotcha. Okay, yeah. then that, that must have been what it was. So they thought there was AI integration in the PAL world development like process, even though there's no proof of it being used in PAL world yet, it didn't stop the rumor from circulating. And then the big one came a few days ago where there was a Twitter account that said that the meshes for some of the models were directly ripped off from Pokemon meshes that they just copy and pasted, calling it exact. But then yesterday, it turns out that guy lied, and it was <laughs> debunked today that he actually just flubbed all of it, and then he said he did it because he didn't like that Pal World promoted animal abuse. <laughs> so What? Yeah, it was complete baloney. Oh, God. That's like the PETA arguments. That's what PETA yeah. used to say about Pokemon too, yep. and Digimon, for that matter. It is legitimate. It was legitimately the PETA <laughs> argument. So that was complete <laughs> hogwash. But there's plenty of like still real complaints about like, hey, it's it's still bootleg Pokemon. Should we really be applauded? Be applauding that? And my answer is yes, because Game Freak can't do Pokemon anymore. They yes. haven't made a good Pokemon game in God knows how long. Pal World is doing it better, and they've now shown the potential of the formula. 
So I think this is a great thing going forward for more games that utilize the creature catching mechanic and build off of it. I don't understand. You're underselling the hatred, by the way, that this conjures from am, Nintendo I fans and Pokemon fans. Underselling. Like, as somebody who's just looking at its surface level, I saw so many threats from people screaming at this company saying, oh, these fucking scumbags, just, this is just a plain Pokemon ripoff. And I was wondering, like, why do you care if somebody rips off Game Freak? Who gives a shit? It's a gigantic company that's lazy, too. Who cares if their intellectual property is ripped off? Like, why do you care? They don't care about you. Let's give them an even stronger response when they say, oh, it's a Pokemon ripoff. Good. Pokemon needs competition. Yeah. <laughs> it absolutely needs yeah. other developers doing it. A big reason is because it's so popular. Like, let's take another example. Tim Tim. That is a literal Pokemon ripoff. Pretty much Pokemon one-to-one -one with a couple of changes. And everyone was singing its praises when it mm -hmm. came out. Another one, Coromon. Like, there's tons of Pokemon ripoffs that people are like, yeah, finally, good Pokemon, but Pal World is so popular. And I guess with the AI being so contentious, given their past, they needed a bigger, stronger reason to hate it. And that was an easy one. They also started calling it an asset flip, which is one of the most laughable things I've ever heard. Clearly, they don't play a lot of games. Because it does use assets, but so does every game ever, and yeah. it's not an egregious amount. Like, the biggest asset flip game that's extremely popular would be Dark and Darker by their definition, because Dark and Darker is almost entirely composed of Unreal store-bought assets. And for some reason, that game never got called an asset flip by most people. I love Dark and Darker. There's a lot of that games never that go under that radar as well. Uh, only Up had a ton of flipped assets as well, and that was the huge streaming game. Bad example, because that is legitimately just an asset flip game that got popular for streamer bait, but yeah. I told you guys before, there's something specific about Nintendo fans specifically. No other like platform fan does this. Where it, We talked about this a while ago about emulators, I think, and piracy, where you had Nintendo fans coming out saying, this is stealing, you can't steal from Nintendo. What is wrong with you? And I was speculating, are these all bots that Nintendo lawyers like paid off, or what's going on? Like, why do you care if somebody rips off Nintendo, right? Copyright is usually seen as a scummy thing where, you know, everybody goes, just let people have fun. Just let people clip your fucking movie for their YouTube video. Who cares? Instead of banning people's entire channels for it. But some video game comes out and they just, whatever. They make a sheep that looks like another Pokemon sheep. Who gives a shit? Just play it and have fun. But no, it's just, it feels like a bot army of people just genuinely fucking angry. It just feels so artificial because I don't get it either because we've already seen two very popular Pokemon ripoffs that got nothing but praise from the same community with mm -hmm. Tim Tim and Coromon. Like it's just, it, it feels so synthetic. It makes no sense really. I think the problem is twofold. I think the first is Pal World is the only one of those that really took off and is really very popular. So it's in the mm. spotlight. So more people give a shit. Like every single Tim other... Tim, uh, I Go ahead. Real quick, I think you're misremembering because Tim Tim was so popular that people couldn't play it because they couldn't allocate enough resources to allow enough people to play it. That game <laughs> was exploding in popularity when it yeah, came but out. Didn't Pal World become the most concurrent player played? Pal game World is significantly Steam. more popular, but it's not like Tim Tim flew yeah. under the radar or anything. No, but I mean, Tim Tim. What, this is like it dwarfs it by an order of yeah, magnitude, it, it definitely right? does. But it's not like. It's not like Temtem was unpopular no, or something. No, I, I don't think that's no. correct. I'm looking at the Steam charts right now. Uh, when Temtem launched, it reached an average player count of about 20,000 people with an all-time peak. It of... didn't start with Steam. Oh, where it did it start? It started on its own. Temtem was a, if I remember correctly, Temtem was a download from their site originally, and then it went to Steam. Okay, that might be the case then. I could be misremembering, um, but it was massive when it either, came out. Either way, Pal World's already sold 7 million copies, which is far and away above Jesus. anything that any of the other ones got. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so that's that's, that's one problem. I think it's more eyes on it, more people talking about it, the AI, the all the, all the stuff involved with it causes more people to talk about it and then critique it, and then people want to hate on it because it's the new hotness, the new big game. But I think another thing, and it's a legitimate big criticism I have of the game, is it's not just Pokemon 
that it's lifting. It's kind of just trying to be a best of of big popular games of the last few years. For example, the world and the way it presents itself is very much Breath of the Wild. It plays little piano flourishes when you find new areas. The font is near identical. The way that you scale around and the HUD, the movement, like it's it's almost one to one. Then you have the objective, which is go to the big tree, and it's this big giant imposing tree in the background, and the art direction is taken straight from Elden Ring. It's the same exact feeling of go to that big tree in the distance. Look at that. It's there all the time. The loot boxes in the game look like Fortnite's and open just like Fortnite's. And it just feels like they lifted, they changed it. They definitely did. It's not stolen assets or one to one, but it definitely feels they just looked at big games and went, put that in the game. Oh, put that in the game. And it kind of kills its unique identity. So I think what people are complaining on that is it's just kind of other games, you know? Yeah, and that's a very real complaint. That's one of, like, a very real criticisms of it. But then right. it should boil down to, is that a big deal if it does it really well? So it borrows a lot from Ark. I can't even play Ark. I tried to stream Ark, like, two months ago. <laughs> Hackers shut down every single server I joined. Like, Ark <laughs> is an unplayable dog shit mess of a game. So this, to me, is a significant improvement over Ark because it's functional. And also, it's cheaper. It's a $30 game. It's a sub-$30 game. So you're getting all of these different experiences kind of watered down but done well enough that it's still very fun. Mm -hmm. I, I think it'll all pass. Like, it'll, the game will be popular. It'll have its audience and all these people hating will move on to something else. I don't think this is going to be a long time lingering yeah, I issue it's... i think the only thing that I would pre either. prevail it is if nintendo actually like brings legal action or sues them or gives them a cease and that desist would be or something. such bullshit it would that would be such fucking no. shit yeah i don't think they'd win that case i mean it is nintendo they are like the illuminati of japan and so i don't know how far their tentacles reach but that would be such a ridiculous ruling if they're like oh you ripped off our pikachu which is just a yellow hamster that shoots lightning like, what? Yeah. Fuck off. Just let people make cartoon monsters. The dumbest, the shit. And the dumbest part of the argument, the absolute dumbest part, is people not only are ignoring the other spin offs and indie games uh, influenced by Pokemon, they're ignoring that this is not a new concept. Digimon, uh, Dragon yep. Quest, tons of uh, Yokai Watch. Tons of other franchises do the whole monster. It's literally called Monster Tamer, it's an entire genre of game. And yet they're like, ah, it's eh, it's fine. Power World, though, not okay, not good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I, you know what I'm hoping for is that Netflix picks this up and makes a Power World anime, just so all the <laughs> fucking Pokemon fans lose their shit even further. <laughs> what they, I would, I hope they have an Ash ripoff and a Misty ripoff. <laughs> oh, that would be I'd, so I'd, fucking I'd watch fire. That. What I'd really like, and I don't see this happening, but I, I guess it's too early to tell. I would love if the Power World team actually like follows through on this and updates it constantly. And by the end of the year, it's like an amazing game and spawns oh, its yeah. own like new mm -hmm. global franchise. So Pokemon has like a legitimate competitor and Game Freak <laughs> maybe finally gets fucking fired and taken off the Pokemon projects. <laughs> totally agree. Pokemon needs a competitor. You know, it, it it absolutely needs one. The stagnation, the unfinished yeah. products, the absolute just shit. Just that's the only word to describe what they make now. Just shit needs to be actual poop. Yeah, actual dog doo doo. You know, like it. It's it's competition. It needs to step up. It needs something to come along and show. Hey, you can do this genre well. You can give people what they've been asking for. You can improve and iterate on the formula. Not just sell baby games to babies. Especially when your franchise is, what, 30 years old and has people who are adults that are playing it? Yeah, they play with their kids and the kids don't care. But there's plenty of people who play it for the nostalgia, the franchise. They have that audience. Pal World clearly shows that. Yep. Yeah. I think Pal World, yeah. even if it's not Pal World to be the one to compete with Pokemon... This has really blown the door wide open for what you can do with it. So mm -hmm. I think I think this is the start of some really cool shit for the genre. So the studio that made this is a fairly small studio, right? Uh, yeah, I think they had... Uh, I don't remember exactly what it was, but they have less than like 50 employees. Yeah. 
Yeah, pocket pair. I, I know this because I'm looking at an article where it says they received death threats. Which, yeah, that's uh, everybody in the gaming industry. They received death threats for fucking breakfast, according to them. But in this case, it might be real. I don't know. From yeah. all the anger that I saw. Oh, no, you pissed off 17 <laughs> year olds. Oh, boy. Damn, that sucks. <laughs> I know. Oh, um, no, not the Pokemon players. <laughs> yeah. Hide your wife, hide your children. I would be ecstatic to see how this influences any triple A studios because studios always copy whatever works no matter what. I really want a big studio, big competent studio to look at Power World and say, okay, let's try this. Let's do monster taming. And they just make something incredible off of this success. You know? I'd love that too. Yeah. Yeah. But even even it's also important to remember it's early access and even in its current state, Power World I think is just a genuinely fun game. Mm -hmm. It is a I don't like survival, and even with that in consideration, I am still really loving it. Like mm. it's it's just it's just fun, genuinely fun. It's definitely the current big one. People are uh, really all over it. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of the Power World controversy. Yeah, why don't we instead get all over a fresh workout? Mm. You guys interested in that? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. I just did one before the show. Oh, good for you. Did you happen to use FitBod, the fitness app that creates personalized workouts that help you adapt and improve? Always. Do you even have to ask, idiot? <laughs> sorry, I'm sorry. I know that we're all seasoned <laughs> FitBod professionals. Let me explain something to you folks. It's still January. It's still the month of f stupid fucking gyms. People go in there who aren't committed, don't know what they're doing, taking up the space, just making it, making a mess of things, making a hoopla, making a real strange environment. You don't have to be that person. There's probably a lot of you out there who are committing to fitness for the new year, or maybe just doing it in general, not even thinking about that. You just finally had enough. Well, FitBod is going to make you one of those people that sticks around, that trains better, that feels better, and works out better. It's like having your own personal trainer in your pocket. FitBot is a fitness app that will look at your current goals as well as your current activity level and try to coordinate a bunch of different workouts and plans and routines to hit all of your muscles and make you feel really, really good. They take into account the equipment you have available as well as the space you have available and plan accordingly to give you as intensive workouts as you want for every week. I use FitBod pretty regularly and my favorite thing about it is they'll give you a routine and I'll look at it and I'll go, ah, oh, God, deadlifts, I don't want to do that. And you just tap the exercise and you can swap it for a list of exercises that target the same muscle groups. So if you don't feel like doing something, it'll give you tons of different suggestions. And I really like that because sometimes I just don't want to do something and I'd rather do something else. And if you want to do something else about your flabby, out of shape body or you want suggestions on how to make yourself even more swole than ever, you can add FitBod to your workout essentials. Join FitBod today to get personalized workout plans. Get 25% off your subscription or try the app for free at fitbod.me slash official. That's F-I-T-B-O-D dot M-E slash official. 25% off of your subscription. And now that you are large, mm -hmm. now that you are huge, now that you are sweaty, you are going to need a pair of underwear that keeps everything organized and all together. You don't want a ratty old yucky pair that gets soaked in your sweat while you're pumping iron, do you? No. You want me undies. Me undies is going to have any kind of underwear you could possibly think of, including, I, I'm going to just read this verbatim, underwear that will help you look huge. With their contoured pouch and ball caddy. So if you want to trick Ooh. a first date into thinking you're more Sounds impressive comfy. than you actually are, well, that's a great place to start. They have every style on the planet. They have every print you can think of from classic, uh, modest designs to out-of-control wacky bullshit. And they have ladies and men's sizes as well. They also have lounge collections, joggers, hoodies, onesies, and more they've got breathable they've got stretchy they've got comfy they've got warmer wear they got everything you could possibly imagine for your underwear they also use sustainable sourced materials and work with partners 
to care for their workers. This Valentine's Day, good things come in big packages at MeUndies. Get 25% off your first order, plus free shipping at MeUndies.com slash official pod. That's MeUndies.com slash official pod. So like official podcast, but without the word cast. For 20% off and free shipping. MeUndies, comfort from the outside in. MeUndies.com slash official pod. Yeah, nice. thank you, MeUndies. Yeah. Ah, oh, was that everything on Pal World, or were we still going back to Pal World? We can go to the next topic. Um, I have nothing sure. else. Yeah, yeah. I found a fun thread on Zitter, and so would you guys like to learn how to get bitches using dark psychology? Oh wow! What an incredible <laughs> way to lure me in. Yeah. Yeah. Are you casting an <laughs> incantation on me? What the fuck? <laughs> so I found one of these pickup artist accounts that just somebody retweeted into my timeline and it starts saying destroy her ego dark psychology thread and then each <laughs> uh, tweet here is one image and I thought we could maybe go over them one by one and just give our little opinions on how you know we can learn from this on how to destroy women's egos <clears throat> the first one this is by the way his name is dating master so <laughs> You know, us here being notorious incel virgins on the official podcast, we can learn a lot. That's how you know he gets lots of dates. He calls himself the dating master. I hear that phrase all the time. Is that just, is that his handle or is that just what he calls himself? Uh, no, that's his user, like his public username, but his at, his handle is dark psych for men. Oh yeah, you're right. It comes up if you just um, type in dating master. <laughs> yeah. Cool. <laughs> 181,000 followers. Like a yeah, lot. Yeah, no, he's he's big. His pinned tweet has him in like a black hoodie and it's up at the gym with a girl on him. So this is this might be effective actually. Yeah, I don't know if it's him or if they're using just stock photos because they also have book covers. Oh. Stuff from them. Yeah. I don't know. What these pickup wow. artists like to do is just take other people's photos and whatnot. Um anyway, first tweet says, do not compliment her looks. Leave her to wonder why everyone sees her as a big deal and you don't. Don't be the regular guy who goes around simping. Only compliment her when she does something and she does it right. So I agree with this. You should never tell women that they look nice. They no. get all uppity, mm -mm. you know, you fluff her ego. And we're trying to destroy it, right? Have yeah. you guys ever done that? Counterproductive. Complimenting a woman? What are you, gay? Stupid. <laughs> Simp. Yeah. Do so not seek her validation. Real quick, I, I just went went through a couple of his Twitter threads here. Which one are you on? Is this the how to get a girlfriend one or which one? Um, I can link it in our show chat here. Because his how to get a girlfriend one has an entirely different step one. Oh no, this is just how, this is specifically not how to get a girlfriend, but how to destroy her ego once you do have a girlfriend. So this oh, is how so to tear is, a woman gotcha. down. Yeah, yeah, gotcha. yeah. Uh... Let's see. Never ask for commitment. I like this one. This is a pull away move and it is mental. That's how it works. Know how to act in speech over the phone or face to face. Don't let your action speak volume of what you want with her. So never seek commitment. Women love this, by the way, whenever you're just like, you know, I don't really want to date you. <laughs> it's very romantic. <laughs> Prioritize your go Let me find a nice one here. While you find a nice one, someone in the someone in the chat just linked another thread that he made on the 18th, so only a few days ago. That's about the best compliments to give a girl you like, and the first one there. Ooh. This immediately contradicts his first thing about destroying ego or whatever. But the first compliment is you're not like everyone else. This guy just watches anime. He's just taking anime <laughs> lines like the cliches ever. There's n nothing more beautiful than your smile. You're a good, kind, sweet person. How is it that you always look so great? Yeah, wait, this is contradictory. This is also not dark psychology. These are just nice things to say. What the fuck? You are so beautiful that it is hard to believe you are even real. <laughs> oh, that would really destroy a woman if she heard that. She'd be devastated. He's a fucking fraud. This guy's a fraud. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> yeah, number 10 is, I love the way you can laugh at yourself. If I said that to a woman, she'd be shattered, mind broken. I'd mind crush her like Yugi did to Kaiba. 
could you pass on to your parents that they did an <laughs> awesome job? <laughs> what a fucking loser. What a loser. Oh my god, what a dork. I know. Your presence warms the coldest heart. Oh god. Uh, I love how beautiful you look when you sleep. This is the kind of stuff like a 15-year-old boy texts his teenage girlfriend. Like the first time you're ever complimenting a girl. Yeah. Oh uh, my god. Dark psychology. Back to destroying her, by the way. It says, dress very nicely when you go out with her. The goal of this is to take the attention from her and give it to yourself. She's going to step up her game and compete with you. <laughs> Look at other women. Yes, take glances at other women. It's already, It already creates a notion in her mind. Hmm. Jesus Christ. Why are you Christ. Competing, competing with the woman like a caddy? Like, I have to look prettier than her. Are you going to vomit before the day too? Why does this guy have almost 200,000 followers when it's very clearly just stupid bullshit? It's just actual nonsense. He has a lot of likes He just too. contradicts himself. His girlfriend won though. This one's kind of interesting. So step one for getting a girlfriend is select the girl you want to make your girlfriend. Step two, do your research and make a subsequent report. Should contain likes, dislikes, common friends, family background, hobbies, type of recognition that she has acquired. And street report. That is that exactly means. what women find attractive when you pull out the Excel spreadsheet of all their stats and go, look, I ranked yeah, you. Yeah, they love it when you stalk them. Yeah, I was looking through your social media and then uh, referring to step three, I did a character profile and it was extensive and mm -hmm. comprehensive. So I referred to the Briggs Meyer personality type to find my closest match. Uh, that was a step oh three. Oh my uh, God. God. <laughs> This Ugh. is no different than when young girls <laughs> just sucks. look at star signs to find their husbands. Like, oh, he's not a Virgo. If I was a woman, I would be more attracted to the man who sent me a random dick pic than anyone who said this shit to me. Yeah, this is so awful. I don't think any woman would like to hear that you assemble a dossier on her. Like, oh yeah, hey, by the way, I like you, so I bribed 23andMe to send me your DNA, so we're really compatible, you know that? Your Briggs Myers bullshit test said that you should fuck me. <laughs> The texting is, mistakes that keep you single. This is amazing. I just love pickup artistry because all of these Me guys too. are just basically rip off Andrew Tate's. And they all, we've said this many times before, but pickup artists only come in two varieties, which is one is the rich guy like Andrew Tate who is independently rich and he just sells bullshit courses like, hey, here's how you get rich. Pay me 20 bucks and I'll tell you how. And then he becomes a millionaire. And the other type is these pencil neck virgins who go around giving advice. And I think this guy's the second type who is probably like a 20 year old dude mm. and had never, never had had a girlfriend. Uh, yep. We're analyzing this. Stop being needy. I'm That's just going through a ton of his threads thread. now. Here's yeah. a, this one. This one might help some of our listeners. This is how to make women obsess over you as an introvert. Step one, use Ooh. your introvert powers of mystery and surprise to your advantage. So, you're fucked, is basically what that's saying. Fucking introvert superpowers. So I, I found uh, suggestions on how to stop losing like a nice guy and, and win chicks. And one of them is dress and look, dress and look like a bad boy. If you walk around in a five-year-old t-shirt, discolored <laughs> jeans, jacket that's too big, pair of basic sneakers, don't expect anyone to see you as remotely masculine. Here are the basics of the bad boy look. Leather jacket, simple t-shirt, oh. oh, jeans, no. leather boots, tattoos, accessories. This guy's stuck in 1995. He's a greaser. Hang on, I'm also on the bad boy thread right now. It teaches you how to become a bad boy and stop being a nice guy. First advice, don't smile or nod while listening. Nice guys always display a smile on their face while listening to women. Studies have found that men who smile often appear less attractive. Oh my <laughs> god. Don't simply, because the less a man smiles, the more tough and intimidating he appears to be. Women love that. Always look angry, actually. I'll give you even better advice. Not just not smiling, but look angry at her actively. Like, always <laughs> appear as if you're about to beat her up. <laughs> yeah. Just, Maybe raise your voice and, like, m f uh, coil your fist and shake it at her. Like, yeah. oh, you. <laughs> why I oughta. <laughs> I was gonna say, every, every time she talks to you, you, go, why I oughta. Come here, you. You're a wise guy, eh? <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
uh, talk well, less. Bad boys don't talk so much. They just know how to use the fewest possible words to explain themselves. When you talk less, you become more mysterious, less boring, and on top of that, you appear less needy. I feel uh, sorry for anyone who listens to this. I really do. For anyone who follows this. I don't think anybody is. Like, there's no way. Like, nothing here is sensical. Even slightly. Yeah. Like, every thread I go to, it's just a bunch of gobbledygook here. So, like, this is best <laughs> open-ended questions to ask a girl to keep her interested. And the first one, what's the worst and best thing about being female? Like, who, what the fuck? These are, th this is nothing. This is actual nothing. What? What kind of question is that? I have no idea. It's that's a stupid like, question. That's like a, if an alien was a virgin. The first time on Earth, like, so you're the female half of the species. How does that feel? What a weird fucking yeah, like, question. Yeah, it's, it's just so disconnected from reality. Ah, I like this. Make girls feel like they can save you. She needs to feel that she, and no other girl, with her special magical feminine powers can save slash tame you from doing reckless things. An example, guns, speeding, being impulsive, partying, <laughs> and she can bring out the sweet, sensitive guy in you. You guys ever try, like, your girlfriend ever tried to tame you from speeding with guns as you're partying in the car? Oh, well, no, it's the opposite, Kaya, at work. She gets super turned on. If I go 10 over, she's just soaking the passenger seat. Yeah. You're such a bad boy. Let's play oh, Russian boy. Rat. <laughs> oh my god, man. This is, yeah, I don't, uh, yeah, this is so pathetic. It's just so pathetic. It is so pathetic. <laughs> I would love to know what this guy looks like. I've got, I've got to know. No, you're never going to see that. I You'll guess. never see him beyond his sea of girlfriends. He's got like 20 of them at any time. That's a good point. Yeah. Of course. Destroy. Ah, oh, damn it. How can you make an introverted girl open up to you? I still don't understand what dark psychology he's preaching. I don't know, other than just the edgy imagery, I guess. Like, I'm dark. I think this guy just watched too much anime and he's identifying with, like, the antagonist or something. That's kind of what I'm thinking. <clears throat> Pretty cool find, though. Mm-hmm. Yeah, thank you. I mean, there's a ton of these guys everywhere and it's always the same thing of yeah bitches be crazy this is what i call I, I don't think you were there but andrew was this is what we call on the internet being spiritually gay where yeah you're like physically attracted to women but psychologically you just resent them so fucking much just a female psyche that you stew this much over how much women and their psychology sucks and whatnot i just date a man already that was, like, super profound, actually. Like, unironically, that was kind of deep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's light psychology, bro. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I feel bad for boys to just tumble into this shit, though. Yeah. Oh, it's gotta be so tough now. Yeah, these days to avoid all this garbage and just ignore all this shit growing up. Oh, God. Oh, well. Mm-hmm. Oh, well. I guess maybe you'd know, Kaya, since we're on the topic, do you, mm. b before we switch, I found one of these accounts a long time ago, and I've never been able to find it since. It's a husband and wife combo, and they're both in, like, I think their mid-50s, and he preaches, like, really stupid shit about how you can have a whole harem of women, and he does it with his wife on a podcast. Do you know who that is? Fuck, that sounds familiar, but no, not at the top of my head. Damn. Are you talking about Jack? What was his name? The guy who got caught doing gay porn? No, no. no, no. Well, he was. You're talking about Jack. Uh, Jack Alpha Man, whatever. But he he was caught yeah. being a cuck. Yeah. Yeah. No, not yeah. that guy. Jack Somebody Murphy. Else. That's yeah. Not him. No, they don't no, know. No. No. There's okay. so many of those though. There There's is, like but this one was a freaking dozen. His was pretty fun, and I haven't been able to find his Twitter account since. No, but I love these offshoots. The other one that I sometimes like and I almost want to vomit whenever I see a video of him is the Liver King. Oh, the Liver King. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, is that guy even real? Is that like a joke? Is he just eating like props? Or is he actually biting into bull testicles all the time? No, he's he's actually eating that shit from what I understand. Oh my god. Yeah, it's fucking revolting. Okay, well, that was dark psychology. Um, 
do you guys have something or would you like to read some small penis problems? <laughs> well, how am I supposed to? What the fuck? There's nothing I can say that sounds cooler than that. Give me some of the small wiener stuff. It's the default. Yeah, it's the, well, you yeah. get the this or you can do small penis problems. Well, Jackson and I sometimes send each other screenshots of various subreddits that we browse. And one of them is r slash small dick problems. And it's one of these. Is, it's always just these guys who date women that they think love them. And then along the line, the girl slips up and says something very demeaning. Uh, this one is called, my wife called my penis a hen. I thought I had finally found a woman who liked me and accepted me for who I am. But yesterday she shattered the little confidence I had left. During foreplay, she jokingly <laughs> said that she wanted to suck my hen. I asked her what she meant. And she explained that because I have a small penis, it isn't a cock, but a hen. <laughs> oh, <laughs> no. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> the worst fucking thing you could possibly say. <laughs> it instantly ruined my mood I left the house and now I don't know what to do she's been ringing me since I left last night she knows how she knew how insecure I was about it yet she chose to ignore my feelings for a cheap laugh I, I like to imagine that she actually made herself giggle too all the suicidal <laughs> thoughts I had yeah. are slowly coming back I really don't feel like living anymore <laughs> edit for those that are curious I did speak to my wife she was unapologetic and said I was acting up blowing things out of proportion that's I've crazy. decided to spend some time away from her. Uh, yeah, that is so fucking mean to say to that someone. That is yeah. extraordinarily mean. Especially your husband. It's not like they were just on a date or it was their first time fucking. It's her husband. She should be well aware of this. It's like if he called you fat in the middle of sex. You just yeah. don't do that. That's so fucking out of place and mean. But yeah, you have these uh, subreddits, obviously. We've talked about micropenises before, right? Yeah, we've definitely talked about it. Yeah, their lives just revolve around having a small penis and dealing with it. I don't know why Reddit isn't loading for me, unfortunately. Well, to, to be fair, that is like an extremely debilitating thing and surprisingly not that rare. I, I've brought this up on stream a oh, couple yeah, times. Sure. Micro, yeah, micro penises aren't uncommon. Well, I mean, they're uncommon, I guess, statistically. But like the amount of micro penises out there is probably significantly higher than most of you listening are thinking. So it is like a real thing, and it, it's a serious problem, like actually a debilitating condition. Didn't we do the math before? Isn't it like one or one or two out of a thousand men have a micropenis? No, 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 no. I think it was out of 10,000. I think it was out of 10,000. Which is still not a small number. Oh, yeah, you're right. It's not. It's yeah. not a small number. 1.5 and 10,000 males. So there is, you know, how much would that be? Like 10 micropenises listening to us? <laughs> if you have one just let us know real quick speak up which which one of you is trying to hide in the crowd all right who who has it who has it show us well don't actually but you know i'm too dumb and and uh damn i guess statistically there wouldn't be one in our patreon chat here with 200 people um here's another one looked up customer reviews for dildos of my size Big mistake. Turns out mine is, quote, smaller than expected, will return, end quote. <laughs> Perfect for a beginner, but you're going to want bigger later, end quote. And of course, the classic, quote, great for anal. Good to know what people are thinking about you when it's objective and impersonal, I guess. Takes all the guesswork out of what the average person thinks about my dick. Well, hang on, hang on. No, hang on. That guy's a negative Nancy. He's huh. got a superpower there. His dick is great for anal. He's got a way in. He could just be like, it's not that big. Let me let me get in there. Let me try it. Come on. Yeah, it's not going to hurt. Yeah, it's just not going to hurt you. The whole thing is just the tip. Yeah. yeah. I actually kind of galaxy brain too to Google his size for dildos to see what people say. That's pretty smart. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for honest opinions. <laughs> yeah. Checking out the reviews. Oh, these poor guys. Again, my advice is don't. They're just... Find another way. Just fucking eat her out. Get a get a fucking toy or something. There's a thousand ways to make someone calm. Yeah, or find someone who isn't a piece of shit and is gonna like ruin your whole self esteem over it. Someone who supports Agreed. you. Yeah, that also would help. Or if yeah. if you are gonna resign yourself away from sex, then at least like I don't lean into the sciences, like Isaac Newton and fucking Tesla. Just people who died virgins, right? Just there's other things in life. It's fine. Yeah. Easy for us to say, I guess. Uh, okay, I cannot make Reddit load. 
which is unfortunate because I was going to read some more, but okay. Reddit wasn't loading for me earlier either. Um, I had a good things we like corner, but I thought I'd save that to the end. That's admittedly that and Pal World were kind of all I had. You can drop your thing you like. We can yeah, start not? that early if you like. Uh, damn, I'm on the spot first because Jackson's not here. I bet he doesn't like having oh. COVID. Fuck. Um, have <laughs> either of you seen Band of Brothers? Nope. Not I yet, know about no. it, but I've never seen it. Kaya, what'd you say? Same. Okay. I, I also saw it. So over the last two or three days, I marathoned it because it's been on my list for a while and I wanted to give it a shot. Boys, I think I have a new favorite television show ever made of all time. And I think there's wow. arguments it's better than Breaking Bad, Better Call Saul, Peak Game of Thrones, all of them. Band of Brothers is an actual just fucking cultural achievement. It, it's downright amazing. Mm. Bold claim. It is that a bold is claim. Bold. It's a very bold claim. But episode... So... Episode one is kind of just a prologue. It, it It's a good episode, but it kind of just sets the stage. Episode two might be the best episode of television I've ever seen. Like, like it's they pulled an Ozymandias from Breaking Bad right out of the gate and it works. It, it's just so goddamn good. Um, it's a story about it, it's fictionalized for sure, but it is also highly accurate. Uh, highly historically accurate. It follows a paratrooper division in World War II as they parachute into Normandy and then make a campaign through like Belgium and the, and Holland and all these places. And it retells their stories of what happened. And by God, the episode when they finally start going into Normandy during D-Day, holy shit. Absolutely incredible, jaw-dropping television. Especially for the time, made in 2001, when... The, oh, that's exactly what I was looking up. Yeah. So, another thing with that show that I really, really admire is, in a way, it's kind of amazing it was the success it was. Episode 1 premiered three days before September 11th. And after September Oof, 11th, yes. right after, is when stuff like that, really big, violent stuff, just kind of got kibosh. People were, like, not comfortable with it. They didn't like it. But the show went on to be hugely successful. And it's just fucking amazing. I, I wish either of you had seen it so we could talk more in depth about it, but I cannot recommend it highly enough. If, for, if you keep in mind that it was made 20 years ago with uh, the CGI and technology back then, a lot of it's practical. A lot of it is practical effects. But for a television show, for a miniseries, it's fucking phenomenal. Absolutely something special. I can't get over it. Yeah, I was going to say it being older probably even makes it better because they just yeah. don't have the cheap special effects that they shove into every show now. I mean, lately, yeah. what is the last big, amazing TV show that you can remember? Right, I mean, <laughs> Band of Brothers. In my, from, at the top of my head, like, no, I mean, like, recently. Better Call Saul is the last one I would name, right? That was just better call like Saul a cultural the phenomenon. Of us. The Last of Us might be the answer. Yeah, I yeah. guess The Last of Us, yeah. But even The Last of Us, I don't really hear that much about. Mm-hmm. Like, even HBO isn't really releasing any heavy hitters anymore. Yeah, and that's it's also an interesting time capsule when you watch it. It's shot on film, actual film, so there's film grain in every shot, and it's authentic. Um, there's, it just, it really evokes that emotion of when there was one big show at the forefront of everything, and when TV actually mattered, and when you waited weekly to see it. So something that happens with Band of Brothers is the intro is long as fuck. It's like over two minutes, and it's slow and methodical and has a ton of credits. And at first I was like, damn, this intro is really long, but then I remembered, this is a show that you used to only be able to watch every week. Like, it would premiere on HBO once a week. So the intro acts as a recap, kind of a, like, what happened, you know, throughout the series, what happened last time. So it makes much more sense. Um, there are critiques with it that do come from that idea as well, before TV shows got these ginormous budgets. So the budget for the show was large. It was, like, $12 million per episode. It's definitely not small. Jesus. But... But today we have shows that have like 50, 80 million per episode, you know, far, far beyond that. But then again, they blow it on CGI and all that shit. Um, yeah, what has like 50 million per episode? 
Uh, the Lord the of the only Rings one I can show. think of is Rings of Power. Yeah, yeah. Rings of yeah. Power had 50 oh, million. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I forgot that was a thing. There was another big show that's pretty recent that had like 50. I think Last of Us had 30 million per episode. One Piece. One Piece. One Piece had One Piece a had lot. a huge budget. Uh, the Game of Thrones later seasons had huge budgets. Um, like Band of Brothers is up there. It's not a cheap show for sure, but it's not like this gigantic budget sink like modern shows. Um, the only pl thing I do critique it on, and it's just a product of the time, is there is some CGI that's not <clears throat> amazing, but they do a very good job of, like, covering it. Like, it's obscured and filtered, and, like, they're not trying to make it look real. They're trying to make it, you know, just there for the sake of needing it there. Um, but otherwise, I can't recommend it highly enough. If you're looking for a new show, like, like a new void to fill Breaking Bad being over, Better Call Saul being over, all those like really well-crafted, methodical shows being over, I think Band of Brothers is perfect. Just uh, an utterly flawless show from start to finish. I might put that on my bucket list because that. I'm going to need something after Breaking yep. um, Bad and Better Call Saul. So I'm going through Breaking Bad again with my wife. We have two episodes <laughs> left from the finale. What time is this? Because, well, what time, uh, sorry, what like time is right it for now. you? What's what watch is it for you? What number? What watch is it? Yeah, what? How many like, times, how many have, times you seen? have you watched it? Oh, break, uh, six, seven. I don't know. I mean, I, <laughs> I just love the fucking show. It's so rewatchable. It is. It is, <laughs> it is amazing. <laughs> My wife, for some reason, she watched it years ago, but she stopped after season five uh, or four, so she never saw the last season. Because I figured, okay, let's start from the beginning and then we, afterwards we can watch Better Call Saul as well, which I think is even the better show. So those are amazing. And thankfully, mm -hmm. now that it's over, we don't have to wait, wait weekly, which is great. But after that, we might check out uh, Better Please Brothers. do. Please do. It might not I like good be, shows. Yeah, it, it might not line up to you exactly for your cup of tea because so shows like Breaking Bad are, are more kind of character drama focused whereas band of brothers is more kind of ensemble focused like there's a lot of characters and it kind of follows the the scenes and the actions rather than individual characters but it does and it doesn't it, it's it's a different show i will say that it is a different kind of show but it's mm -hmm. still incredible it's still amazing um so i i actually wanted to spin that off into a different topic if you don't mind or we can keep going with things you like up to you no, spin it off. Okay, so as I'm watching Band of Brothers, as I'm watching Band of Brothers, the first episode comes on, and one of the drill sergeants, one of the not drill sergeants, one of the like higher ups, the guys training the men, is Ross from Friends, David Schwimmer, the actor David Schwimmer, and immediately I'm kind of off put because I'm like, oh god, it's the guy from Friends, and all I see is the guy from Friends or whatever. But he does a great job. He's really, really good at his part. He really fits the role. He's great. Having said that, I get to episode six, and there's a scene where they're walking into a forest to defend it from the Germans, and another platoon is walking the other way, having just fought the Germans, and they're all haggard and fucked up and, like, traumatized and whatever, and they're like, oh, do you guys have ammo, food, we're running low on supplies, whatever, whatever, and in the distance, there's a jeep honking its horn. And a man's screaming, and he goes, I got supplies, I got ammo, come on, gather around, I got the supplies. And it's Jimmy fucking Fallon. And it just no shot. It immediately <laughs> pulled me out of the show entirely. That's I fucking that. amazing. I know. <laughs> Jimmy Fallon has a cameo in episode six, and it is the only time in the whole show, and it's not even the fault of the show, because this is before he did Late Night. It was when he was on Saturday Night Live, but it's the only time in the whole show that someone shows up and I go, oh, fuck, my immersion's broken. Oh, God damn it. That's just Jimmy Fallon. I don't care when this was filmed. That's the talk yeah. show host, man. There he is. God damn it. <laughs> God damn it. Oh, man. I hate that. I hate that when they do that in shows, it immediately takes you out. Right. In serious shows, I mean, like comedies. Yeah. That in comedies, was, um, it works because yeah. they're like, oh, there's a funny man, but... Like, that That's yeah. where I was going with that. Are there any really bad or off-putting cameos you guys can think of that you remember? No, not that I can remember. Not anything in serious James stuff. Corden in any movie ever. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's not a cameo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but just him being there in any movie ever fucking sucks. <laughs> oh, Chad, Chad is giving a good example of Aroy. Mm. Um, oh, fuck, what's that guy's name? In Game of Thrones, the Ed singer. Sheeran. Who had an 
Etch your nails. Oh, Thank yeah. You. That was another one that was weird. You're right. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. A similar one that that I, it's not a movie, but same kind of idea. Is it Cardi B in uh, Call of Duty? Is it her who's in Nicki it? Minaj. Nicki Minaj. Nicki Minaj. That's it. Not Cardi B. Nicki Minaj in Call of Duty just is the weirdest goddamn thing to me, and I don't know why. I, I hate seeing her in it. I know there's a bunch of, like, fictional character cameos, but I don't know. In my brain, I'm kind of like, okay, you just throw the pop culture shit in there just because, like, Fortnite. But then there's just Nicki Minaj. There she is. The person. It's just weird to me. <laughs> She's not even playing a character. It's just play as Nicki Minaj in Call of Duty. That one freaks me out. Yeah, you said that before. You don't like, I mean, understand yeah. when they put that one rapper in Magic the Gathering too. Post Malone and just Magic, him. yeah. 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 yeah, not even a character. If, if they played him. characters, I'd be totally okay with it. If Nicki Minaj played, like, let's say, Blaze, and she's a operative, and she does stuff, and she's, like, trying to act, totally fine. But then just her, it's it's just weird. It, it'd be like if I'm watching Panda Brothers, and when Jimmy Fallon rolls up, the army goes, Wow, you're Jimmy Fallon. What are you doing in 1944? Like, it's, it's just I, dumb. Yeah, you I know? get that. Yeah. Oh man! No, oh well. I prefer shows where, if anything, it's like actors that are unknown. It's their like their first yes. role or something, and they're really good at it. It's like I don't, I don't want to watch Breaking Bad and then have like I don't know, Jay Leno or Amy Schumer on screen. Like fuck off! I would genuinely turn it off if that happens. I think that's why Band of Brothers really works really well. The casting also, I believe, was a lot of lesser utilized actors at the time. I some of them have gone on to do really big shows and movies and all that. Um, but every now and then, except for the occasional cameo, like Jimmy Fallon or David Schwimmer, it's mostly actors I just did not at all recognize. And I think that really helps immerse you in the show because they feel more real. It feels more like just generic soldiers rather than, you know, like Tom Cruise running around the battlefield and you just go, oh, look, it's Tom Cruise. He's the, obviously the protagonist. He's obviously the big hero. You know what I mean? It's very yeah. good. It's no shit talking so, Tom. Yeah. Well, no, no, no. I love Tom Cruise. <laughs> I just think he would not fit this show. He would take too much yeah, spotlight. Yeah. Um, so the show is produced by Steven Spielberg and Tom Hanks. And you can tell they basically just wanted to do Saving Private Ryan again, but as a TV show. And it, <laughs> it's got that Spielberg magic, man. Moments feel big and grand and impactful. And it's it's just incredibly well made. It is fantastically directed. The music is perfect. It's got a full orchestral score. It's it's fucking awesome. It's I cannot recommend it highly enough. I already want to rewatch the whole thing. Super good. Oh, well, that's cute. How many episodes yeah. is this? Ten. It's ten. I just looked it up. Yeah. Oh. Oh. So it's a mini series. Yeah. Yeah. There's a sequel oh, okay. or oh, or a. That's good. There's like a like a parallel show called The Pacific. So Band of Brothers is all about the German fronts in Europe, and then The Pacific is about fighting Japan in, obviously, The Pacific. But I've heard it's not as good and different, kind of a different show, so I haven't watched it. I don't know if I will just yet. I kind of want to, kind of want to, like, soak in the Band of Brothers. But, you know, there's that, too. But I, I can't recommend it enough. It might be on Netflix still. Not sure. Yeah. Nice. I'll have to watch it. Please do. Curious. I'm curious what you guys would think, because you know, it's a little little more ensemble, a little less character focused. I wonder if you guys would like that or find it a bit harder to get invested. Who knows? Uh, well, I'll like let you it. know. Cool. Mm -hmm. cool. Do you guys want to talk about something you like? Mm. Uh, mine would have been Pal World, but if I had to choose something else, let me think. You know, I'm also thinking, there's not anything specific standing out. Can I say Breaking Bad? <laughs> <laughs> That's brave. That is brave. <laughs> I know. Hot take. <laughs> it's just uh... so damn rewatchable. I don't know what I would choose if not Power World. Ah, oh, well. Pokemon World. You can choose Power World. World, it's fine. And you can choose Breaking Bad. Let's just choose things we already chose before. It's fine. 
<laughs> no one's going to care. No one's going to yell at us. Or we can jump topics. Yeah. Kyle. What else did you have? Uh, I have nothing interesting. I wish Jackson was here because he had that topic about that one YouTuber hitting people up for feet pictures. Chugga something. Oh, uh, that was the Chugga Conroy thing? Mm. You think so? Do you know anything about it? Enough to I, talk about it? I didn't like... I, probably not enough to talk about. I didn't like super dive into it. From what I understand, he like loves feet and shoes. So there was <laughs> another creator that for a while he would like ask for feet pics from and like sent sent her a pair of shoes for feet pics in or something at some point. But yeah, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, and then the, the person thing. sent them back after wearing the shoes, and this guy would like inhale the odor of the shoes and go, mm, yummy, yummy. Here's a message. So people leaked all of their Discord conversations, I guess. And this guy's name is Chugga Conroy. Good, glad we understand each other. Walks up behind you and trips you with some fancy footwork. You thud to the ground and I yank your sneakers off in an instant. Ha ha, loser. Chucks them at you. So they just role play as like a five-year-old bullying people. That sounds fun. <laughs> hmm. yeah. Is that the face you'd make if I ran off with your shoes at a con? Oh. Yep, there's a lot of talk about him cool. running off of shoes. It's my personal favorite shoe. Do I get to see you in them? Okay, yeah, so a lot of messages. I, I think I'll save this for Jackson to talk about. He was very eager and laughing at this, sending me like 50 fucking screenshots of this guy talking about foot smell. Um, yeah, we can just save it for when he's here. Not a lot happened this week. Well, and uh, Charlie and I kind of get vindicated, though. Andrew, you know, I always like mm. to say that the airline industry is the most safe out of any, and lately, uh, you know, they've been having some issues. Boeing, specifically, especially. Uh, their doors are blowing out midair. Their wheels are <laughs> really? popping off during... <laughs> yeah, have fuck? you not seen that video of a no. plane landing with the emergency door that just popped off midair and it had <laughs> land like that with the cabin depressure Oh, fuck. No, I didn't Here's a list of that. things that happens. January 5th, Boeing 737 has a panel, panel rip-off midair. January 13th, a Boeing 737 cockpit window cracks. January 17th, Boeing 737 strands blinking. I don't know what that means. January, January 19th, Boeing 747 cargo plane burns up. Oh, I saw that video. There was like a ball of fire in the air. Apparently, they safely landed, though. January 20th, Boeing plane at the Atlanta lost the wheel, so they were talking, taking off. And in the middle of takeoff, one of the wheels popped off and just <laughs> rolled down the runway, and they had to abort the fucking flight because the Jesus. pilots looked out the fucking window and they saw the wheel just rolling away. And there was another news of some guy who, was it an American Airlines flight? I don't know, but the guy looked out the window and he saw that some of the rivets and the wings weren't there. <laughs> and he told the flight crew and said, hey, um, we're missing rivets, I think, in the uh, wing there. And then they called a bunch of guys, uh, the engineers, to fix it as the plane's just sitting there waiting for take, basically just getting stalled. And he recorded this on his phone and this went viral on Twitter again. And what the people on the... I don't think they were engineers, just the guys trying to fix it. They would take out rivets from some holes and then put them into other holes to try and space out the rivets, basically, instead of just putting the putting new ones into the holes that didn't have any. So they had to cancel that flight. Uh, and now apparently Boeing has paused production for a, quote, quality focus day. Okay, okay, Kaya, you obviously don't know what you're talking about. I just looked up Boeing on the New York Times, and the top article is from today... Uh, Boeing 757 lost nose wheel before takeoff, 170 <laughs> people injured. So you're obviously just Jesus. making this shit up. Okay? Wait, what? Yeah, this happened earlier this morning, apparently. <laughs> when we say injured, does that mean like a nosebleed or how serious was it? So, oh, uh, sorry. No one was really hurt, but they had to deplane. So I guess, oh, I guess yeah. nothing. I was but, gonna say what happened. Yeah, nothing more than being bumped around. That's my misreading. Uh, but either way, the, the fucking nose wheel fell off before they could take off, <laughs> and that happened. That happened literally 15 hours ago. <laughs> Jesus Christ! Oh man, it never ends. 
So it seems well, the to issue me, is, so people are speculating seems, what the issue is on a bunch of. Sorry. Well, yeah, yeah. Go ahead, go, go ahead. ahead. That's where I was going. Well, former Boeing employees and people that used to work in the airline industry in general are just saying, well, all of the knowledge is getting lost. Like, all of the boomers who knew how to run this shit like clockwork, they're all kind of retiring and the new people don't know anything because people aren't getting hired on merit anymore. And also Boeing and all these airlines are now outsourcing a lot of the work, which was also mm. the issue with the, um, was it the 747 Max or whatever, the Max 8s that kept crashing. You guys remember that one? They were just death spiral, right? Mm-hmm. No, it's no longer yeah. like American companies or European companies programming these things. Instead, they just hire them out to like third world programming uh, farms, basically to, you know, it's just all outsourced rather than in-house to save money. And they are doing the same thing with parts and whatnot. So little by little, all of the little checks and balances, all the hyper anal super specific things that the airline industry used to do to keep it the safest industry on the world or travel industry in the world. It's kind of falling apart slowly, which is why now you're having these increased reports of just doors popping off, and wings falling Jesus. off and wheels popping off like it's a fucking shopping cart. <laughs> How the fuck does a wheel pop off a plane? Oh my God. <laughs> That's see. happened before, to be fair. It's not the yeah, first time. I don't know if that had... Yeah, well, of course, there's always been issues with airplanes, but not to this frequency where it happens like every week now and where the passengers yeah. themselves have to constantly remind them. Again, the guy who found the missing rivets on the plane, like what do we as the passengers have to do now? Like get out to the plane and kick the tires to make sure it's capable of flying? <laughs> I don't know. It's I don't feel around, comfortable you have to hold. You have to reach out the window and hold the wing in place with the other passengers to make sure it doesn't come off. <laughs> It's a new protocol. It saves money. $20 a ticket cheaper. This is NYC bound flight canceled when passenger notices missing bolts on plane wing. What the fuck is going on at Boeing, man? Like, it's all Boeings. Like, that's Jesus Christ. <laughs> well, they're just the main um, one, I think. They have yeah, so many. They do. They do. Yeah, they do have. But I mean, other companies to Airbus says from. Uh, oh, this was an Airbus. The one with the missing bolts. <laughs> Engineers were promptly called out to carry out maintenance checks on the Airbus A330 aircraft before it's scheduled to take off. Footage shot by Hardy showed that one of the engineers climbing onto the plane's wings before using a screwdriver to take... By the way, they used a screwdriver. Like, you would think they would have some fucking specialized industrial tools to really, you know, squeeze the fucking bolts in. And the guy just had a hand screwdriver. Like the one that you would find in your fucking drawer at home. Nothing stronger than a little so elbow cool. grease, Kaya. I, I know, right? You know how they say with like when you're building a computer, never to tighten the screws too much. Just use like two fingers and gently tighten them just enough so you don't strip the uh, the fucking thing. Well, I guess that's how they're treating airplanes now. Just yeah, here's a screwdriver. Maybe take a hammer and hit it a little bit, like Patrick from SpongeBob would. <laughs> Jesus that's Christ! So stupid. But yeah, I'm, I'm starting to think maybe I should drive everywhere from now on. I, I don't know how confident I am now in airplanes until they get their shit together. I'm not confident in Boeing, and I know they're they're the majority, but man, Boeing really needs to step it the fuck up. Holy fuck. <laughs> well, both, uh, Boeing and Airbus, yeah. yeah. I think those are the two big major players. I can't even at the top of my head think of a third airline. Uh, what airline, what airline doesn't use them? I'll fly that one exclusively. Oof. Find it. I don't know. Airlines all fucking suck anyway. Yeah. So I feel very vindicated. Yeah. <laughs> we win. <laughs> it turns out we were right. Oh, I mean, it's uh -huh. kind of ironic, I guess, that we were objectively just wrong. It's just that they fucked it up so much that now we're right. Yeah. They just you, made it more you dangerous. You in this so. pocket of time. <laughs> you in this pocket of time are correct. When they fix these issues, it's going to go back to. No, you're silly. But for right now, yeah, I, I, I might avoid a plane or two with all this going on. Not I a bad idea. Eventually, it has to go back to us being silly, right? But I feel like it's going to get worse before it gets better. Like, it kind of sounds fucked up, but I feel like we're going to have to see a couple of crashes. And yeah. then have an investigation where it turned out like, oh, yeah, they didn't bolt the cockpit together. So it just blew into the fucking engine <laughs> or something. We're going to have to have a couple of crashes and investigations where it turned out that they hired the janitor to build the plane before it gets better. 
The sad part is you're totally right. I forgot where I saw this. It, it was a long time ago. I might have talked about it up on the show, but it was some guy talking about bridge infrastructure, and, and it's related to this because he said the problem with the bridges is the city and the people don't want to fix them and pay for the work they need until they see cracks, until they see a bridge collapse and people die, until you yeah. look at the bridge and go, oh my god, it's going to fall. When really, as an inspector and our team, we can look at this bridge and say, holy shit, this needs to be fixed now. This is really unsafe. But it looks fine. On the outset, it looks okay. And I'll bet you the same shit's happening with the planes. The engineers and the people and all that shit, they're just like, yeah, it looks okay. It, it, don't worry about it. And they're going to need a plane to fucking explode in a fireball before they go, we have to fix this. We have to change it now. That's incredible. Yeah, this, this is what happens if you get your programmers on Fiverr, right? And then you just pay them a meager <laughs> oh, wage man. to save money. And you have no freaking standards anymore. And again, the, the other issue is that all the experts are retiring slowly. All the boomers who are, you know, as, as much shit as we give boomers, they are kind of holding the entire system together. There's a lot of knowledge bundled up in a whole generation of people who are about to retire and take that knowledge with them. This is an issue in the nuclear field as well, as far as I know. Like in Germany, they just don't have like young nuclear engineers anymore because they hate the technology so much that there's basically nobody left who knows how to maintain a nuclear plant or build a new one. So they couldn't even do it if they wanted to anymore. It's kind of the downside to all this shit. So I'm going to be driving. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna be staying firmly planted on Earth as God intended. Oh God, that's my plan as well. I'll, I'll take. Well, up you sailing. did fly though. You overcame your fear, Charlie. At least now you can say that once. you did it. Why well, you still did it? You know. So just don't mention the once part. Just say, "Yeah, I flew." Well, I've flown like ten something times, but it was the first time I flew in six years last year, and I don't plan on doing mm. it again. I fucking yeah, hate flying. Now. Yeah, especially not now. Take up sailing. Get in a boat. It'll be great. Oh, no, that's even worse. That'd be so much worse. Have you guys seen that new super, uh, the fucking cruiser, the cruise liner, the uh, what is yeah. it called, the spark in the ocean, or whatever the fuck it's called? I have not, I I but I hope we talk about cruise ships. I fucking hate them with a passion. Oh, you've not seen the new one? What is it called, Chat? The new big one, the biggest one on Earth now. Yeah, Spark in the Ocean is just showing me awesome clips of people riding uh, wave runners, and they look like they're having a huge amount of fun, and I'm kind of jealous now. I forgot what the fuck this thing is called. Icon of the Seas. did you type up largest? Look up. Oh. I did. Icon, Icon of, of the, the seas. seas. Look at photos of this fucking thing. Oh, God. It's like a fucking freight barge. It is, it is a city. It's, just, it's a straight up city. It has a water park the in it fuck? and multiple full-sized pools and like a surf pool and 23 restaurants and all this shit. And it's the biggest thing ever, which kind of, you know, it looks cool from the outside, but from everything I've heard about cruises, it would be a nightmare to actually be on it. I fucking it hate so cruises. Ginormous. I can't stand them. I think they're the stupidest, worst goddamn thing on the planet. Have you been on one? I've been on three, and I hated every single one of them because oh, my dad, my dad was like, "We're gonna get the family together and go on a cruise." And every time I was like, "This sucks ass. They're fucking dog shit. Why ever, ever, ever go on a cruise when for that money you could stay at a luxury hotel, get access to all the exact same shit, but then if you're bored, you can leave instead of being literally trapped in the hotel for the majority of the time." Yeah, you're just paying to be in a hotel and you can't leave it. People go on cruises and they're like, oh, I love it so much. They, they're like, oh, I love it so much. It's so much fun and there's so much to do and blah, blah, blah. And then I always ask, what do you do on the ship? And they go, well, I drink and then I, and then I go to the pool and then I drink and then I go maybe to the casino and then we drink and then we drink and then we see a show and I'm like, you could get the exact same thing going to any fucking like vacation city. Go to Vegas, go to Branson, go to Dollywood, go, go anywhere, go to a luxury resort, go to a fuck, buy a plane ticket to a fucking island and go to an actual like nice beach. Do anything that's better than this giant pollution factory in the ocean. 
So don't they dock in different countries though, and let the passengers they off do. for like a day they or two? They do, or but those are a, those are a ripoff as well because they're they only dock in cities that are basically paid for by the cruise company. So when you go to a city, so I went to Jamaica on one of my cruises. You don't actually go to Jamaica. You go to a city set up by the cruise line that's in Jamaica, run by people who just either work for the cruise line or are basically kind of allowed to hang around by the cruise line. So you get the most flat touristy like mm. fake experience of visiting a country you could ever have it, you don't you're not actually going to the country in anything but technicality it's all fabricated it's all like disneyland style shit it's just sucks man <laughs> they're so bad still i have to you have to appreciate just the engineering just the human manpower that went into making a literal floating city that part True. is very impressive to me, but other than that, I mean, it is very, very impressive to look at. Look at this fucking thing. Five times larger than the Titanic. Fuck me. Can you... Yeah, you're right. And to this day, we're still like, oh, I can't believe humans built the pyramids. Yeah, I mean, bow down. Oh, another, another <laughs> reason what I we're fucking building now. Let's talk about human engineering. Another reason I hate cruises, they basically employ slave labor. There's a lot of write-ups and articles... There's a lot of write-ups and articles. If you go on a cruise, the vast you. majority of your staff are going to be international, and they're going to be from countries where they kind of just don't have a better option, and they work for the cruise line, and they keep them there for so many fucking days of the year and find ways to not pay them, and they also humiliate the shit out of them. I remember one of the cruises I was on, they do dinner service, and it's like, oh, you can show up at the dining hall at like 7.30 or 9.30, and we'll cook you a nice meal and have everyone together, blah, blah, blah. And I remember the last day of the cruise, they get a bunch of the waiters together and the cooks and like people in the staff, and they put them on the stage and they force them to sing and do a rehearsal song where they basically do Be Our Guest. And they dance and perform and say, thanks for coming on the cruise. And they clearly don't want to do it at all, and they fucking hate it. <laughs> Oh, man. Fuck cruises. I will never, never vouch for them. They're the worst goddamn thing ever. Oh, and let's talk about quarantine boats. Remember when COVID was really, really bad and they'd get COVID on the cruise and they would just dock the ship and the government would say, you literally cannot enter oh, the yeah. country again or we will fucking shoot yeah. you. Yeah, that doesn't happen at a hotel. You can leave. They don't quarantine the whole building for the most part. Whereas with a ship, they just don't let you come back into the country if something goes wrong. A hotel cannot capsize and be stuck sideways in the ocean and have to be relic helicopter rescued. I fucking hate cruises. Fuck them. To be fair, I don't know. Would this thing even be capable of capsizing? Like how? This, I feel like this thing could buffalo through a dozen of the same iceberg that sank the Titanic. You could probably use this thing like to sail through the Antarctic. It is five times Look larger than the Titanic. Jesus fuck. Oh like, I I am looking at this is we're playing God by this point. Like we should not have this power. <laughs> Who's the guy who flipped over the Concordia? We need to get him at the helm and see what he can do with this. Oh, the guy that, like, <laughs> drifted drift? it and then like hit a coral yeah. reef or whatever. Yeah, and then after he did that, he left the ship and went home. And he was like, eh, not my not my problem. Whatever. <laughs> Wasn't my finest performance, but yeah. it's, it's honest work. Yeah, you know, everyone everyone flips a cruise ship every now and then. Here's an idea. Take this thing and shove it right into the Suez Canal. You guys remember when that thing was clogged <laughs> and nobody was getting their graphics cards and whatnot? Just yeah. shove this oh, thing in yeah. there and dilate it. Wasn't the, <laughs> it the Egyptian freighter that got sideways somehow? And they had to use little tugboats yeah, to wedge it like out? That. Yeah. Man, this thing apparently only, quote unquote, only cost two billion to make too. Isn't it crazy that like, wow, somebody like Bill Gates or Elon Musk could literally buy this thing and just for fun, like ram it into a dam and flood a whole wet valley and still have enough money left to do it a hundred times more. That's <laughs> Jesus <fucking> Christ. <laughs> That is quite a villainous <laughs> plan. <laughs> oh, I, I just don't get the appeal, man. I really don't. I don't know why people think that going to a hotel on the water makes it better than any other hotel. It, it's crazy to me. Yeah, I'm in the same boat. Uh, the same boat. That's, that's a good pun. Didn't no offense to. to anybody who might go on a cruise on this thing, but I'm really rooting for a terrorist takeover because that would be so <laughs> cool for them to kidnap an entire Fuck. city. You're not even wrong, dude. I want to see Die Hard. I want 6. Die Hard. 
Yeah, Die yeah. Hard 6 on this giant cruise. <laughs> I want to see John McClane with two machine guns going down the water slide and shooting everyone from decks 10 to 12. Oh, fuck. He's so senile. He, he thinks he's actually on land in the city. <laughs> <laughs> oh fuck me oh man oh man i still remember i still big. remember i think i was 17 when i went on my first cruise and i was with my brother and when we stopped in jamaica and we went to the port town and all the all the people from the cruise were literally like yeah let's hang out in the port town and like look at the pop-up shops and all this shit and my brother he was like no this is stupid let's go actually find jamaica let's go find jamaica like real jamaica or whatever we can get so we walked a good bit away and we just found this town and we're walking through it and people were just following us asking for money or trying to sell us cheap crap and one guy walked up and he went hey man you want coke you want coke and my brother went like coca cola and he went, what are you, stupid? And walked away. <laughs> <laughs> it was a good time. Fuck? It was a real good time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, cool. man. Well, that's your loss. Yeah, I'm sorry I'm never going on a cruise again. Rather have a fun vacation. Sorry. Oh, well. Yeah, I don't think I, I don't think I'll ever go on a cruise either. It just seems so fucking boring after day they are, one. They they are just garbage. Everything you can get on a cruise, every single thing you can get better with a real vacation package at a nice place. I would be okay nice with city. it if it was a form of transportation. If it was like okay, it's, Kaya, it's gonna take three days and it's gonna take you from America to Europe. Then I'd be like, okay, it's probably better than being stuck on a fucking yeah. plane for 18 hours. Then I, like, you guys know those cross-continental trains? Like, the, have you guys seen the murder on the Orient Express? Like, a really fancy, pretty train? I know what you're talking about. There's yeah. a famous, there's a real famous one that's like 11 hours long, and a lot of people say it's like the most scenic ride on the planet. I think it yeah. goes through a mountain range, of very, like the Alps And you have a cozy something. cabin and whatnot. Yeah. It's nice service and such. If it was just transportation, a form of transportation... I'd be down, but if it's just, we're going to pick you up and then 30 yeah. days later, we're going to drop you off where we picked you up. Uh, no. Thank I 100% agree. They do a loop. It's pointless. They do a fucking loop. If if someone said, we'll take you from the east coast of Florida to like up north, like Maine or wherever, that'd be a cool idea. You know, you ride a cruise the whole way mm -hmm. there. It's a day or however long it takes. And you have fun on the way on your trip. And then you visit wherever you're at. But the fact that you just do a loop, what's the fucking point? You're stuck yeah. on the ship the most of the time. You can't leave the hotel. And they just go back to where you were. They don't even take you anywhere. <laughs> what's the point? <laughs> it's so stupid. Oh, God. Eight cruises. Do they have if prisons you, on these? Like jails? Can they arrest you if you're around? They have a brig. They in case they have to like contain or detain people. Yeah, yeah they have like a little jail cell in the basement. Oh <laughs> man. If you're the type of person who goes on a cruise and think you had an authentic, like, international vacation, you're the same type of person who goes to Disney World and thinks Epcot is an authentic representation of the countries. Like it's not. It's not even close. Oh boy. All right, that was oh, fun. Oh, well. Uh, good luck, Icon of the Seas. I hope you get kidnapped. You guys want to rap? Sure. Sure. All right. Oh, God. Who, who's going to do it? <laughs> you. You did the intro. Oh, it's no. It's you now. No, you are Jackson. No, Jack, no, Jackson, we miss you already. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of the official podcast. If you want to see clips of the show, bonus content, extra features, we have our own YouTube channel, which is at the official channel YT. Is that the right link yes Fuck. okay the, at the, uh, yes at the official channel yt i think is the official you'll find it if you search the official podcast on youtube we got our own channel now spotify itunes we got a patreon patreon.com slash the official podcast for bonus episodes there's like literally hundreds of them now tons and tons of stuff well worth a sign up there's other shows on our channel as well including the red thread and criminally stupid and other content coming there mm -hmm. we do lots of things you can check all that out but for now you listen to this episode and i'm proud of you we'll see you next time bye 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 everyone bye